What the fuck are you doing? like three cinema cameras here and a gimbal. You can't use one of those for fuck's sake. Jesus Christ. Traditionally on my channel, I've been known to upload the odd vlog here and there. I wouldn't consider myself a real vlogger. I wouldn't even put them up weekly. I wouldn't even put them up monthly. I would only really bring a camera with me if I was doing something that I deemed exciting enough to document. If I did this enough times throughout the year, at the end of the year, I'd be able to compile a bit of a montage of highlights from the year, and that would serve as a bit of a time capsule for me to look back on and be like, isn't that lovely? I did this in 2018, at the end of the year. I made a highlight of the year, just to remind myself about the things that I'd achieved that year and the places that we'd been. I got married. We went to Mexico on honeymoon. We went on a road trip around Europe. We even went to visit Armacan in Los Angeles, America. I'm gonna get emotional here. It was a very action-packed year. Then 2019 rolled around and the plan was to do more of the same. And it was certainly heading that way. I continued to tour around with stand-up. I booked my first ever arena show. My wife fell pregnant, clumsy. We even announced her pregnancy whilst on holiday in Tenerife. She gave birth to our son in November. Baby was healthy, mom was healthy, or so we thought. Nine days after giving birth, Maureen was admitted to the hospital with a blood clot. After further investigation, they realized that the blood clot was a result of lymphoma in her chest. The most unexpected and devastating news to hear as a new mother. So straight away, she began chemotherapy. Six week long sessions, two weeks apart. So every two weeks, she had to go into hospital by herself for a week whilst I stayed at home with our son. That then went on for several months. An exhausting blur of late night hospital runs and midnight feeds for the baby. I continued to tour and do comedy, fulfilling all my dates in late 2019, right up to early 2020. And in January 2020, I had my first ever arena show at the SSC Arena in Belfast. In fact, during the second show, Maureen was actually still in hospital getting treatment. So needless to say, my 2019 highlight video was a bit late. I ended up posting that on the 8th of February, 2020. After the SSE shows, I had a few gigs in the diary. I planned on chilling out and focusing a bit more on the podcasting side of things. It was around that time where I took on a new office in Belfast. Day one moving into General Banter HQ. I've basically just had nuggets and then we'll paint a wee bit. A new chapter in my podcasting and I had already started to decorate the place and I'd already recorded a few podcasts on location. This was early 2020 and around that time I started to hear whispers of this deadly virus that they'd discovered in China. SARS-like virus infected hundreds in China now reach the United States. China. Hundreds dead. China. Thousands infected across multiple continents. China. Outbreak of mystery pneumonia cases in Wuhan began last month. China. This is going to get worse before it gets better. And of course, at the time, I didn't really pay much attention to it. It just seemed like something that was happening in a different country and it was never gonna reach this side of the world. I was far too busy trying to organize my new office space. My wife, Maureen, was obviously in a much more heightened state of awareness about her health as she was in the middle of chemotherapy and was classed as immunocompromised. So she started to become worried about this mystery virus that was sweeping the globe. I can actually remember the exact phone call where she rang me and I was in the office and she told me that I should probably cancel any upcoming gigs just to play it safe. Next gig I had coming up in my diary was Pugs Comedy Club on the 12th of March, 2020. So I had to message my good friend Dave Elliott who runs Pugs Comedy Club and tell him that I was unable to perform that night and I would get him back. I owed him one for canceling at such late notice but we were just being overly cautious because my wife was a bit paranoid about this virus. China. And sure enough, she was absolutely fucking right. Shortly after that, the country went into full lockdown. They advised people not to even leave their house unless it was absolutely necessary. So I made one last sneaky trip 
back to my brand new office to collect all my sound recording gear, to take it back home to start recording my podcast from home again. We were officially housebound in lockdown, but thankfully we had just moved into a bigger house. The weather was great at the time and we had plenty of space to run around with the baby. Looking back on it now, it seemed quite fun. It was just a lot of barbecues and beers. I started to up the frequency of my podcast recordings just to sort of busy myself. My wife finished her chemotherapy and we decided just to enjoy this forced downtime in our new house. At that time in 2020, those lost months, people just felt a very anxious monotony and were doing all sorts of silly things to busy themselves. There were a few ups and downs in 2020, but we have the tendency to look back on it now and kind of write it off like it was a lost year. But when I look back now, it seems like there was a lot of notable events. After a few months, as people started to move around a bit and return to work, I decided that would be a good time to move my equipment back to Belfast. I wasn't coming into contact with anyone. I was just driving straight to my office to record by myself. Around that sort of time, I decided that I should probably delegate a bit of this workload. So I reached out to someone that I knew was good with audio. And that's when I approached the multi-talented, multi-platform tech wizard that is producer Nile, and we set about entertaining the masses with a ton of podcasts. Around the July mark, it seemed like the lockdown was sort of easing up quite a bit. I don't know if the lockdown was actually easing up or people just seen that there was good weather outside and they'd had enough of this fucking lockdown. I was no different, I felt exactly the same. That's when I decided to host a very private and intimate gig in my office space. This happened on July 18th, 2020. Looking back now, it seems pretty irresponsible. Although we did go about it in the safest way possible with distancing and masks. And I'm nearly 100% sure no one got COVID. Maybe herpes, but not COVID. And it goes without saying, of course there was another lockdown straight after that period. And I didn't get back on stage to do stand-up until September 2020. And that happened at the Limelight Belfast, where we had six sold-out shows over three nights. Even at the time, the gigs were very touch and go whether they were going to happen or not. We went right down to the wire waiting on announcements from the government. Eventually, they went ahead with some weird restrictions, with the obligatory substantial meal being served in the form of pizza, just to make sure people didn't get too pissed. But to obviously make sure everyone touched each other's food, which is... Smart. There was then a few stand-up gigs organized on the run-up to Christmas, but of course, we ended up going into lockdown again. I actually didn't mind not having gigs to worry about because earlier in the autumn, Maureen then found out that she had to receive more chemotherapy. She would then have to be admitted to hospital for four weeks straight by herself to receive a stem cell transplant on the 29th of December. So at that time, it was just me and the boy killing time till mommy got home with a few deliveries of food to the ward here and there. Once Maureen got home, the next few months were just a bit of a blur. A lot of walks, a few trips to the sea, a few coffee runs, but nothing really of note, just spending some quality time at home. Then the moment we'd all been waiting for, on the 16th of April 2021, Maureen got the all clear. After we got the good news, we celebrated very quietly at the side of the road because the baby was asleep in the car. Cheers, thank you. Bye. Huh? Complete metabolic response, as it's called. Fucking yeah. It's all done. The baby's asleep. Fucking yeah. That's it, Wayne. Well done. Do we just go by Champion right now? This is the quietest celebration of all time. A great day, and I don't know about Maureen, but I've never felt more relief in my entire fucking life. And then after that, things really started to look up. Double vax, things seemed to be getting back to normal. Real events, real people, real hugs, real experiences. Let's go to the montage.
actually sure why I'm making this video. I feel like it's easy to write off these lockdown times as sort of nothing periods, but there have actually been some fairly significant things that have happened for me and my family over the last couple of years. So I suppose this is just a bit of a time capsule for me, really, one for my own records. And I feel like I've come full circle a bit because the last vlog highlights ended with the SSA Arena show and I've got another one coming up in September. So I suppose the aim for the rest of the year is to try and cram two years worth of highlights into a few months. Let's get after it. Do I get some noodles?